listening to Destiny Podcasts. We pray that this message will bring change, inspiration, and blessings to you. We are Destiny Church Manila. Live your call, fulfill your destiny. Ayan, so we did a series about Born for This because we believe that each person needs to know what we are born for. Do you agree? Yeah, you know, one of the greatest tragedies in life is if you don't know what you are born for. One of the greatest tragedies if you don't know what is the reason for your existence. Now, when I was a bit younger, there was this show on TV that I was addicted to. The title is Mara Clara. (laughs) You know that, that, ano, palabas? (laughs) I really loved that when I was younger, every afternoon ba I would always play fast. And go home fast so I can watch that show. And that show talks about a rich, the baby of a rich family ano, kidnapped by a poor family. Tama ba? Naalala nyo pa ba? Yung mga kapanahonan ko dyan. <laughs> yeah, the baby of the rich family and then it grew up in, a poor, in the house of a poor family. Di ba ang, sag, ang saklap kapag ganyan yung nangyari sa buhay natin? Do you agree? No, you were born royalty and yet you're living your life as though you're just low class. Many people are like that. They don't know the purpose for their existence. They don't know what they are born for. So they settle for low class when in fact, high class pala. Right? Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, high class ba yan? Hindi, amoy low class eh. Hindi, dahil sa ulan lang yan. Ayan. So we will continue talking about born for this. Last week, Pastor Carlos shared about followership, born to follow. And he will continue on that series in the weeks to come. But for today, kunyari, may series din ako. <laughs> I will continue on what I shared before. Do you still remember what I shared? Yeah, what did I share? You are born to? You are born to win all the time. So today... It is Born to Win All the Time, Part 2. Oh, may, gany- may nalalaman din akong ganyan. Nakala nyo, no? So, you're born to win all the time. Amen ba? And today, we will talk about that thing that keeps us from winning all the time. Now, I would like to read this quote. I just got this from the internet. Luis El Amor. Sabi niya, A wise man fights to win, but he is a fool if he has no plan for possible defeat. So you have, to, you have to get rid of those things that bring defeat in your lives. Now, we don't just believe that we are born to win and nothing will defeat us anymore. Because there will be times, there will be tests, there will be temptations that will try to defeat us. It will try to pull us down. Kahit nga, ulan, pa lang, ulan lang yan. That ulan can be... Uh, a stumbling block, it can be a force that can defeat you, right? So we have to be aware that defeat can be possible, so we have to get ourselves ready to win all the time. Now, the difference between victory and defeat is just one step away. So don't ever think, ah, kaya ko to. I can do this all alone, all by myself. You have to be guarded all the time. You have to secure yourself all the time. Okay, so right now, I will be sharing with you a story from the Bible that I don't like. I really don't like this story. Before, uh, before, this is the story that I really try to avoid. Yung gusto ko na mga stories sa Bible, yung stories about God will bless you, God will multiply you, God will heal your disease. Do you like those stories? No, yung, yung bread nagiging feeding for 5,000. Ah, I love those stories. Yung crippled, nakalakad. Gustong gusto ko yung mga ganon. But stories like this, I used to hate it. I used to read stuff like this. Because before, I didn't want to be confronted. I didn't want to change. I didn't want the brutal facts to be there in my face. But you know what? Just recently, the Lord brought me back to these verses. And I realized, people who hate this story are people who refuse to change. But people who want to change, they love this story. Okay ba yun? Excited ba kayo malaman kung anong kwento ko? But before that, can I ask you first, do you want to change? 
Because destiny is a place where people change. Destiny is a place where we allow God to change us. Okay, so magkakwento na ako. Medyo mahaba to, ah. Pero just bear with me. In Joshua chapter, Joshua chapter 5, no, in the book of Joshua, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, God gave an assignment to a man named Joshua. Now, Joshua is a mighty man of God. He's a servant of God. And God gave him this mandate. You will conquer the promised land. Do you think that's a good mandate? Yeah, it's a good mandate. At the same time, it's a very challenging task. No, imagine mo na lang, grabe yung lands na ikakonquer nila. And then God told Joshua, there's a place named Jericho, and that Jericho will be your inheritance. And then God gave Joshua a strategy. No? Yung description po ng Bible about the, book, the place of Jericho is that it's a strong fortified city. The walls of the city are so thick that even two chariots can race on top of it. No, ganun kakapal yung, yung ano niya, yung um, wall niya. No, siguro as thick as this stage. So if you want to defeat a strong fortified city, you really need to be a massive force. You really need like grabe na power, grabe na strategy. But you know, surprisingly, the strategy that God gave Joshua was very different. God told Joshua, oh, Joshua, do this. For seven days, this is what you will do. On the first day, you will go around the wall. No talking, no doing anything. Don't get your swords out. Don't get your trumpets out. Basta maglalakad lang kayo around the city. Do you think that's a good strategy? Parang, <laughs> I must be on the losing team. So that's the first strategy, or the first day. On the second day, that is what God asked them to do again. Go around, shut up, just go around. And then on the second day, anong pinagawa ng Lord sa kanila? Ay, third day pala. <laughs> Preschool teacher pa naman ako. <laughs> on the third day, on the third day, God asked them to go around again. On the first, fourth day, Go around again. On the fifth day, go around. Do nothing and just go around and be quiet. And then next, fifth day, sixth day. And on the seventh day, God told them, you can go around seven times, but on the seventh round, you have to shout the loudest. No, Like, sigaw ka lang, ah! May, basta may something-something na sisigaw sila. And then just shout, and then the walls will come down. You know what? Joshua obeyed God. And on the seventh day, on the seventh round, they went around. And true enough, when they shouted a shout of victory, the walls came tumbling down. Like in front of them, the walls began to crumble down. And then they entered the city. They defeated their enemies there. How many of you know that is a great miracle right there? How many of you know that is like victory, powerful victory for them? No, how I wish life is that easy all the time. Right? No, kunyari, meron kang gustong bahay. There's a house that you want. Just walk around seven times. And after seven rounds, the key will be there. And that's the key to the house. Wow. No, in the morning service, I got this idea about how to find a husband. <laughs> find a man. <laughs> Walk around. <laughs> Morning team kasi. But that's just me. That's not from God. But it can also be God. <laughs> Baka yun yung revelation niya sa akin. You know how I wish life is that easy. But you know, we can learn from that story that God desires victory for us. Amen ba? God desires us to do great things for Him. God desires us to, to, to be mighty for Him. You know what happened? When the walls began to crumble down, people around the city, the villages or the cities around Jericho found out about it, and they began to talk among themselves. Narinig mo ba? Did you hear what happened? This is what happened in Jericho. Grabe talaga si Joshua. Grabe yung mga Israelites. People began to talk about how great a nation they are, how great a God, how great God is. So I will start from there. So the Lord was with Joshua, Joshua chapter 6, verse 27. 
and his fame spread throughout the land. But, no, sa kasunod niya na verse, but the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them. So the Lord's anger burned against Israel. So there was this mighty victory, but there was also about to happen a great defeat because they were not faithful to the instruction that God gave. No, backtrack lang tayo ng konti. No, konting flashback lang. What was the instruction that God gave to the Israelites? Now, when they were about to defeat Jericho, God gave them two assignments. Number one, destroy every living thing. And number two, all the gold, silver, and bronze belong to the Lord or to the treasury of God. So, dalawa lang, simple lang instruction ng Lord. Destroy all living things and all the wealth should be brought to the treasury of God. You know, before, I used to hate this verse because I didn't like the instruction of God. Sabi ko, grabe naman, ang harsh. All living thing. Okay, sana kung sinabi ng Lord, it would have been better if God said, all the criminals, kill them. <laughs> all the bad people, kill them. But in this line, in this story, God said, all living things. Tatay, fathers, mothers, those who are pregnant, the babies, everyone. Is this the God that you know? Parang, si Lord ba talaga yan? But you know, when I read a little bit about this story, I read a commentary. It said, the, the, Those who lived in Jericho were a vile people who practiced the basest forms of immorality, including child sacrifice. God had given them over 400 years to repent, but now their iniquity had become full. You know what? Maybe they were thinking, we can get away with this. Child sacrifice, immorality, and all sexual sins. But there came a point, God said, enough is enough for Jericho. So that was the time that Joshua conquered Jericho. Okay? So yun yung dalawang instruction ng Lord. But the problem was, ito na, I will read chapter 7 verse 2. Okay? Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai. This is the next place that they were about to conquer. So the men went up and spied out Ai. When they returned to Joshua, they said, Not all the army will have to go up against Ai. Send two or three thousand men to take it and do not weary the whole army, for only a few people live there. So about three thousand went up, but they were routed by the men of Ai, who killed about thirty-six of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. So they defeated a mighty city named Jericho. But when they were about to defeat, they, when they attacked a small city named Ai, they were defeated. Great victory, tragic defeat. Have you ever experienced that in your life? Like there was a mighty thing that happened, sobrang good news. Tapos biglang the next day, sobrang bad news. Or maybe for the cell leaders, you started a life group, 50 people came, <laughs> meron bang ganun? 20 people came. But then the next, eh, two people na lang, one people na lang, minsan itlog pa, <laughs> zero pa. Or maybe you experience that in your finances. You experience abundance at one point. But at the next point, it's as if you have nothing. All is gone. You experience defeat. You know, the reaction of Joshua was, then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of God. He remained there until evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring these people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites? Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by these enemies? The Canaanites and the other people of the country will hear about this, and they will surround us and wipe out our name from the earth. 
What then will you do for your own great name? When Joshua found out about it, he really wept before God. And he said, God, why? What is happening? Help us. If people will find out that we got defeated by this small city, they're going to surround us. They're going to defeat us. They're going to kill us. So from that story, I will give you three points. Ang haba ng introduction, ano? But I really wanted you to know the story so that you will get the three points that I'll be sharing. First point is this. God is watching you. Now, can you tell the person beside you, God is watching you? No? God is watching us <laughs> from a distance. Hindi. Kanina sa umaga, yung, ay, in Tagalog, may nagmamasid sa'yo. God sees you. You know, so many Christians, many times, we just commit sin and it doesn't affect us anymore. Because we forget that there is a God who sees us. Now, don't ever think that you can commit a sin and keep it a secret and nobody will find out. Because God sees you. You know, before, I used to hate this topic. I used to hate this preaching because I really hated to be exposed. Ayoko na malaman ng mga tao, ay, ganyan pala si Ate Jill. But you know, when God began to deal with my heart, I realized it's better to expose yourself and allow God to cover you than to cover up yourself and end up covering yourself in a futile way. Right? It's so hard to pretend. It's so hard to, to put up a facade. It's so hard to put up a mask. It's so hard to live your life as if you're two people in one body. Right? You know, this message is not meant to condemn you. But this message is meant to confront you so that you will change. Because that is what God wants for you. Amen ba? Tama ba? You know, the Israelites, they acted unfaithfully. They did not take God seriously. They took His instruction lightly. Many times, we are like that to God. We, God gives an instruction and we just take it lightly. We don't value the things that He values. Now, do we have fathers here in the house? Fathers? Ayan, we have a few. You know what? God has placed a special calling upon your life. And you should not take it lightly. No, kaninang umaga, sabi ko sa kanila, Mga tatay, meron kayong kapangyarihan na wala sa iba. Fathers have a certain power that other people don't have. Do you want to know what power fathers are? One power that fathers have, they have the power to make their wife feel like a princess. Right? But sometimes, fathers don't take it personally. Like They just take it lightly. Ay, sawa ko lang namin yan. <laughs> Parang ganun eh. Based on my experience, <laughs> joke. <laughs> Hindi. You know, when I was meditating on this, I was reminded of my parents. My parents, they I'm, I'm blessed with parents who love each other, who love God and who love each other. One practice that they have, they always want to outdo each other in giving compliments. Like, magko-compete yan sila sinong pinakamadaming compliments. Like, my father will tell mama, oh, ganda naman ni mama ngayon. Bagay talaga sa'yo naka-red ma. Tapos si mama naman, ang bait talaga ni papa. <laughs> Sabay, papa, ano nga? <laughs> Sabay utos eh. <laughs> really, no, even mothers, mothers have a special power or a special authority. And what power is that? You have the power to make your husband feel like he's the best man in the world. Like he's Superman. Right? <laughs> Walang nag-agree, no? Kasi wala namang mothers masyado. O children na lang. <laughs> you know, children, we also have a power. God has placed a certain power in us that we can make our parents feel that all their hard work is worth it. Right? Right? So God has placed that in us. Pinapahalagahan yan ng Lord. Kaya kailangan pahalagahan natin. God has placed a high value on that identity. So we should put a high value on it also. Amen? No, some children, they would disrespect their parents. They would not say thank you. They don't show appreciation. You know, when I became a Christian, before I was a Christian, 
I really, I was very rebellious to my parents. But when I came to know God, I made a commitment to God. I told God, God, I don't want to hurt my parents anymore. Because I have hurt them so much in the past, I don't want to hurt them anymore. I don't want their heart to be grieved anymore. Kung ano man yung sakit na naidulot ko sa kanila dati, ayoko na na ma- ma- maibigay ko pa yun sa kanila ngayon. How many children are in the house? Can I ask you, can we tell the Lord that we will change today? Because that is sin. Dishonoring our parents is a sin. Dishonoring God is a sin. When we t- don't take the word of God personally, when we just take it lightly, we just brush it off, it grieves the heart of God. It hurts the heart of God. Another thing for leaders, any leaders in the house? Yeah. You know, sometimes we take our calling lightly, just like the Israelites. They took the instruction of God lightly. Some leaders, they just take their calling lightly that it's okay that they live a double life. Christian on Sunday, not a Christian on Monday. Christian on Tuesday because there's life group, not a Christian on Wednesday, no destiny meeting. Christian on Thursday, life party. Friday, not a Christian. Sunday, Saturday, Christian, there's prayer meeting. Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Christian. Come on, destiny, we're not like that. If you're looking for a church that is okay to play around, you know, live a double life, live a life full of lies, I want to tell you, you can find another church. Because that's not our church. That's not destiny. Amen, Ba? Do you agree? You know, leaders, we have to place a high standard on ourselves. You know, just recently, I had prayer kay Lord. I was praying, doing my devotional, and then I, I, I just cried to God, and I told God, God, I don't want the day to come that I will be found disqualified to be called your disciple. So, Lord, I don't want the day to come that I will be disqualified for, for the calling that you have placed upon me. I don't want the day to come that I will be disqualified for that man that you have prepared for me. Leaders, we have to we have to. We have to take the word of God seriously. And we have to take our calling seriously. Amen po ba? Do you agree? Second thing that they did, they disobeyed willfully. No, You know, God is always speaking to us. God is always um, giving instructions. God is always directing our footsteps. But the problem is, the more we, we shoo his voice away, the more deaf our ears become. Remember the time, your first time that you told a lie. You still remember that? Like it bothered you so much? You can't sleep? Or sige, siguro yung iba hindi naglalay. <laughs> the first time you took a smoke with a cigarette. Diba? Grabe yung conviction mo. Grabe yung, tama ba talagang ginagawa ko? Or if you committed sexual sin, the first time you committed uh, that sexual sin, it really bothered you so much to the point that you don't want to face anybody. Just hide it, hide it, hide it, and forget about it. But you know, the problem is every time we make our ears deaf to God, nasasanay tayo. No, yung mga nagbibingi-bingian, nabibingi, at eventually, kaya wag po tayong magbingi-bingihan kay Lord. Amen po ba? Do you agree? So right now, I want to tell you, now is the time that we have to turn our back on willful disobedience and unfaithfulness. Now is the time that we have to turn our back on those things that hurt the heart of God. Now, how many among you, how many among you na this week, you thought about this thought? Is this pleasing to God? Or you just did it without even thinking if it's pleasing to God? No, we have to consider God. We have to go back to God. Amen ba? Do you agree? Now, that is why some people, they lose their integrity and they lose their authority because of that sin. Now, sometimes they lack the boldness and the courage. Like some people, they used to be very bold and very courageous and very passionate, but they lost that fire. Could it be that there is a sin in your heart that you haven't yet let go? I want to tell you, God sees you, and God desires that you change. Second point. Now, I had a hard time translating this in English. 
tulungan niyo na lang ako ha. Second point, huwag ka mandamay. Ano ba English niyan? Don't damay-damay, others. <laughs> I ha? Huh? Don't damay me. <laughs> Don't damay me with your sin. No, I asked JM kanina, J- Bebe, pa-search naman dyan kung anong ibig sabihin ng damay. Anong English ng damay? Now, the, the best word that we found out is entangle. Now, don't entangle others. Or, actually, I had another translation. It's totally different from don't damay me, but it has the same thought. Second point, settle it now. You like that? Settle it today. Don't entangle others. Don't allow that it affects others. You know what happened with, with Achan? One disobedience caused the whole nation to be put to shame. One disobedience caused defeat for the whole team. You know, when I was reading this, verse 27, the Lord was with Joshua and his fame st- spread throughout the land. But the Israelites were unfaithful and it brought defeat. When I was reading this, I really took it personally in relation to our pastors. No, it's like this. So the Lord was with Pastor Carlo, and his fame spread throughout the land. But the disciples were unfaithful. So the Lord's anger burned against destiny. When I, I really wrote it down in my journal, and I just cried to God, Lord, I don't want to be unfaithful. I don't want to cause defeat for our pastors. I don't want to be the reason that, will, that destiny will be cursed. Do you want to be the reason that destiny will be cursed? No way. No way, right? If you want curse on your life, find another church at dun ka magasik ng lagim. Not, not in our church. Not in destiny. Do you agree, destiny people? Like, if you don't want to change, find a church that is okay that you will not change. Do your thing there, but not, don't do your thing here. But if you want to change, you sincerely want to serve God, you really want to know Him in a personal way, I want to tell you, this is the church for you. Amen? No, really. Maawa ka sa pamilya mo, wag mo silang idamay. Have mercy on your family. Don't damay them. <laughs> Have mercy on your disciples. Don't damn them. Have mercy on your future family. Keep your purity. Wag natin silang idamay. No, have mercy on other people. Wag ito pa. Can I say in Tagalog and then translate for them? Maawa ka sa pamilya mo, wag mo silang idamay. Wag mo idamay ang kumpanya mo. Wag ka magpakatamad. Dahil sa iyo nawala ng millions ang company na 'yan. Come on. Huwag mo idamay ang pera ng iba. Pera mo, gastusin mo. Huwag yung pera ng iba. Utang ka ng utang. Amen. Really, we have to change. When I was doing, writing this in my journal, like every line, I had to cry and repent. Lord, I'm sorry. And then another line, Lord, I'm so sorry. Because we don't want that to happen. We don't want other people to suffer just because we compromise just because we did not, we were not willing to change. And then verse 16, So Joshua woke up early in the morning, and he brought Israel near, nearby tribes. And the tribe of Judah was chosen. And then he brought the family of Judah near, and he, took the family of the, and he chose the family of the Zerahites. And he brought the family of the Zerahites near man by man, and Zabdi was taken. When Joshua found out that there was sin in the camp, he called everybody, like the whole nation. And then, meron kasing 12 tribes yung Israel. So there was one nation, uh, one tribe that was chosen, tribe of Judah. So sabi ni Joshua, tribe of Judah, come forward. Forward naman sila. That's from the tribe of Judah, there were families. And the family of Zerahite, the Zerahite family was chosen. So, Zerahite family, step forward. No, nakakatakot, no? Ganyan pala mag-expose ang Lord? No, kunyari, magtawag tayo ngayon. No? Network of, sino network leader mo, bro? Kuya Andrew. Hindi ko sinadya, ah, Andrew, ah. Nandyan kasi siya nakaupo, eh. Network of Andrew, come forward. 
Tapos nag-forward silang lahat. May, nandito ba yung mga ano ni Andrew? <laughs> Tapos biglang, life group of Elmeray. <laughs> Siya kasi yung eh. Biglang forward naman. Tapos kunyari si Elmeray, he has five, let's say he has five life groups. Let's say UP, Ateneo, PUP, FEU, and what campus do you want? <laughs> Lasal. Oh, yeah, Lasal. Then, so from the five LGs, life groups, the life group from Lasal come forward. To step forward naman sila. Tapos from that family, the family of Achan was chosen. And he was exposed. And God, the God of Israel, uh, and Joshua said to Achan, My son, I implore you, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and give praise to him. Tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. Wow. You know what I want to tell you? God did not confront Achan to put him to shame. But rather, God confronted Achan because he wanted Achan to repent and to change. You know, every time your leader finds out something about you, it's not meant to put you to shame. Like, hindi yan pang destiny, para dun yan sa kabila. You know, it's not, it's not like that. Every time God reveals something to your leader, it's because God wants you to change. Do you agree? It's because God wants you to grow up. God wants you to mature. Alam nyo, yung mga taong exposed, nadidiscover yan eh. Di ba? Gusto, gusto nyo maging artista? I-expose mo sarili mo and they will see your beauty. It's the same way. When you expose yourself to God and you expose yourself to your leader, the beauty or the masculinity inside of you, it's unleashed. Lumalabas kung ano ang totoong ikaw. Right? Lumalabas kung ano yung totoong identity mo. Sino ka ba talaga? So my, that's my third point. My third point is this. It's not yet too late. It's not yet too late. God is calling your attention because He wants you to become the best you. Maybe this is your first time here at Destiny and you find it awkward. Grabe naman, it's my first time and they're talking about sin. You know, I'm telling you, the heart of the Bible talks about God changing the lives of people. That's why we talk about sin because we want people's lives to be changed. It's not yet too late for you. Three things that you can do. Number one, don't hide. Say it. Don't hide. Just say it. I mean, confess it. Confess to your leader. Ganun na lang. Confess it. Stop hiding it. Oh, ito, total destiny naman tayo dito, no? You, we can keep secrets with each other, right? I will tell you one secret of mine. But it's just between us. No, kunyari sa podcast, i- i-blur nyo na lang ang portion na to, ha? Kasi mag-confession ako, eh. There was a, in my past life, I lived a very violent, I was a violent person. Na yung, my bondage was anger, bitterness, violence, more violence. Like, before, yung ultimate high ko is if I make someone cry. No, pag may napaiyak akong person. So, kunyari, for that day, walang, wala akong napaiyak. Malungkot ako, ah, wala akong napaiyak eh. Pero pag may, but if I fight with someone, like, we would have a face-to-face confrontation, ah, I would feel so happy. Yeah, yes, he's getting angry. Yes, sige pa, sige pa, ganyan. Ganun ako, that was, that was my life before. I wanted people to get mad at me. I like it when people confront me. Pag, ano, ina-attack nila ako, gusto ko yun. Kasi, physicalan yan eh. I, I really liked those stuff before. There was a time, I, would, I had a boxing match with a guy classmate. And his tooth, was re- went out. <laughs> hindi, siya, hindi lang siya na went out. Na-box ko siya, tapos natanggal talaga yung ipin. So that was my life before, full of violence and anger. When I came to know God, God began to change my heart. God dealt with me. I became a leader. Ganyan. So, okay na. Loving na. Cheerful. Sweet. Ganyan. Kind. So I'm all those things. <laughs> but then, a few months ago, Ano, I started watching certain movies. No, I remember I watched 
um, ng mga violent violent movies and a violent series. Gusto niyo malaman ko ano yon? Baka bandage niyo din yon. I watched CSI and then I watched Criminal Minds and I watched Lie to Me. Not the Korean Lie to Me. That's ah, no violence there. I don't like. It's another Lie to Me from Hollywood. Ver, ver, ano siya? Something to do with crime and investigation. I watched it for many, many hours. Like, siguro three days straight. I did not sleep. I was just watching those things. And then, what happened was, my mind began to fill with violent thoughts again. My meditation was, paano ko kaya kakatayin yung disciple ko? <laughs> no! Hindi naman! But really, yung, yung, my thought was, paano yung, like, yung meditation ko, kunyari, crime A. Paano niya na-solve ang crime? And then I would think in my mind, it should have been better if the crime A was solved like this, like this, like this, like this. So those were the things I was fantasizing about. Killing people. <laughs> and then that time, when my disciples would confess to me, I would get so irritated with them. I would get so angry right away. But you know, during that time, I was so bothered. The, the Lord was telling me, Jill, you have to stop watching that. You have to stop it. It's not good for you. It's not good for your spiritual health. You know, I was I, sobrang bothered ako. And eventually, I decided, I'm done with this. This is not me. I'm not violent anymore. I don't want to kill people anymore. <laughs> I don't want to put them in the oven anymore and then put it to uh, no, 360 degree Celsius. I'm that's not me anymore. I don't want to slice them 1,000 times. <laughs> really, I, dis- I realized, this is not me. Hindi talaga ako to. So right then and there, I emailed Atesha. No, I still kept that email. Atesha, I, I, I watch a movie. Ganito, ganyan. I watch a series. At sinulat ko talaga yung mga pangalan ng movies na pinanood ko. And at that time, I was thinking, oh my... If Atesha knows about this, maybe she will tell my disciples, huwag na kayong lumapit kay Jill kasi dangerous si Jill. Babala. Warning. Ganyan. Those were the thoughts running in my mind. Or maybe she will tell my co-12, baka maano kayo ni Jill ha, makontaminate kayo ni Jill kasi may violence yan, may violent spirit yan. But you know, I was so surprised when I confessed to, to our pastor and then she told me, Jill, it's good that you recognize those things. The blood of Jesus cleanses you. You have to walk in a manner opposite of how you walked before. You know, that confession brought healing and freedom in my life. It delivered me from that bondage to violence. Many of you here, you want to be set free, you want to change, but you're not yet confessing. Yan ang lamang ko sa inyo. I'm not talking here, I'm not preaching here because I'm better than you, I'm holier than you know. We're just the same. But the difference is, I confessed. What about you? Magsalita ka, kapatid. No, expose yourself. Wag ka na magpanggap. Second thing, ask help. Magpatulong ka. Ask help. Because there are struggles that we have, there are hardships in life that you just cannot do it on your own. So you need somebody with more spiritual maturity who can help you and guide you to the best path. And lastly, number three, let's do it right. Itama natin. Let's order your life so that the right thing will come out. It said in verse 13, you cannot stand before your enemies until you have removed the things under the ban from your midst. And I want to say that word to you and also to the church. Destiny cannot stand if we will allow this sin to remain in our midst. So today, I want to give you this invitation. The invitation to, to allow God to set your heart right, allow God to order your life, allow God to cleanse your life, allow God to change your life. You know, recently I was praying for my network, my cell, for the other networks, and for the church. And one of the things that God dealt with me is this statement. 
in a way, I wrote it in my devotional. There should be no hint of sin in your life, in your life group, in your church. And the only way that that can happen is if all of us will confess our sins to God and repent of our sin. Amen ba? So now may I ask, who among you here, you want to change? You recognize that there are things in your life that is not right. You know, yung term na Achan, the word, the name of Achan means trouble or troublemaker. Sin will bring you nothing but defeat. Sin, yun yung mga pampagulo sa buhay mo. May mga bumabagabag ba sa isipan mo? Meron bang gumugulo sa isipan mo? That is sin. And God wants to deal with it. No, big or small, sin is sin. And it has the same weight, the same effect. So we need, we need to deal with it. We don't just brush it off. No, in the book, in the, in the Gospels, Jesus dealt with anger the same way with he dealt with murder. Kaleve lang pala yon in the sight of God. Sin is sin. So don't excuse yourself by saying, this is just a lustful thought. I'm not committing immorality. My friend, it's still the same. That's immorality. Hindi, sa, iniisip ko lang naman na hindi magaling yung leader ko eh. Iniisip ko lang naman na mas magaling ako kaysa sa kanya. Even if it's just a thought, that is already a sin. God does not like it and we need to turn our backs on it. Right? For example, about money, eh, 100 pesos lang naman to eh. Next month na lang ako magbibigay ng tights. Okay lang yun. God understands. Minsan may mga ganyan-ganyan pa tayo. My friend, yes! God understands. That is why He wants you to change because He understands that if you don't change, the consequence is worse than the temporary pleasure. God understands that the, if, the long-term effect of that sin will be worse than the short-term good feeling that you have for the moment. You know, this message is not a message to condemn. When we talk about sin, it's not to condemn you. Jesus did not come to condemn, but He came to confront so that you will be forgiven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish and will have eternal life. God does not want you to perish. So today, we choose to come to God and allow Him to change us. Amen ba? If you are that person and you desire to change, Ayaw mo na sa mga bagay na bumabagabag sa isipan mo. Ayaw mo na sa mga bagay na in a way nagmumulto sa'yo. I want to tell you, today is your day to change. If you're that person, can I request you to stand up? And we're going to pray together. And we will come to God who knows us best. We will come to God who knows us inside and out. Nobody may know about it. But God knows it. And God wants you to change. God wants you to let go of those things. Right now, if you're that person, you desire to change. Raise your hand to God. Can you raise your hand to God? And as you're raising your hand to God, it's like you're exposing yourself to God. You're telling Him, Lord, I don't want to hide anymore. I'm done with hiding. I don't want to keep this anymore. This thing has been bothering me for so long. I don't want to hide it. I want to change. I want to repent. I want to turn my back on this thing. Right now, just talk with your God. Talk to God. Right now, I want to pray specifically, first and foremost, to the leaders of destiny. Leaders, you have to be the first to have your lives fixed and your lives changed. We have to be the first. We have to be the first to expose ourselves. We have to be the first to allow God to change us. If you're a leader in destiny, just raise your hand to God. Expose yourself to God. God, I'm tired of this sin. I don't want this. I don't want to compromise anymore. I don't want to live a double life anymore. Some of some leaders, we have a we may have a backslidden heart. You're doing the rituals, you're doing your thing, meeting your life group. 
But your heart is backslidden already. God knows when your heart is backslidden. Paano malalaman na backslidden yung heart mo? Kapag yung mga bagay na ginagawa mo dati, hindi mo na ginagawa ngayon. The things that you used to do, you're not doing it anymore. That means your heart has backslidden. Leaders, repent before God. Forgive us, God, for backsliding. Forgive us for allowing our hearts to become cold. Forgive us for allowing our hearts to become become hard against you, hard towards you, hard, hard towards people. Some leaders, you don't hear the voice of God anymore. You cannot discern the voice of God from the voice of the world. Right now, ask forgiveness from God. God wants to change you. That is not your DNA. That is not our DNA as a church. We are a people who hear the voice of God. We are a people who who, who are close to God. Some leaders, you have been prayerless. Before, you used to pray one hour, two hours, even overnight. But now your prayers are so lame. Five minutes, ten minutes, and then you're done. Leaders, that's not who we are. Allow God to change you. Go back to the presence of God. Go back to your prayer closet. Go back to being intimate with God. In Jesus' name, right now, God is changing your heart. God is releasing healing and forgiveness upon your heart. In Jesus' name. Right now, I want to be praying for specific people. Some of you here, you lack faith in your heart. A lack, a lack of faith can sometimes be manifested when you worry too much. You worry about your family, worry about your future, worry about your health, worry about fail, failing. If you are that person and you recognize you lack faith, the Bible says a person without faith cannot please the Lord. So today, we desire to be a people who will change the Lord, please the Lord. If you are that person and you repent, that's me. I lack faith. There's so many doubts in my heart. Can I really fulfill the dream that God has given me? Can I really succeed? If you are that person, just raise your hand to God and we will ask forgiveness together. We will ask God, Lord, forgive us for lack of faith. Forgive us for doubting your word. Forgive us for doubting your promises. Forgive us for worrying. Right now, cleanse our hearts. Cleanse our minds. Purify us, Lord. We don't want lack of faith and doubt in our hearts and in our lives. My friends, I want to tell you, God cares for you. And there's no reason for you to be worried because God will be with you. God will provide for every single thing that you need. Right now, receive the assurance that God will provide for every single thing that you are worrying about. God will provide for your needs in Jesus' name. You may put your hands down. Right now, I want to ask, maybe there are people here you want to repent from the sin of rebellion. Ano ba yung sin of rebellion? It's when you go against the authority that God has placed over you. You show disrespect to your leader, disrespect to your parents, even disrespect to MMDA, to the government, to your boss, to your employer, to your teacher. It's like the picture of a leader, in your eyes, the picture of a leader is that person so hard to please. That person is a monster. That person I don't like. There's rebellion in your heart. You don't like to submit. If you are that person, just raise your hand to God. Let's ask forgiveness from God. Let's repent before God. God is not pleased when our hearts are hard towards our leaders, towards our parents, towards our boss, towards our teachers. Right now, ask forgiveness from God. Forgive me, Lord, for rebellion. Forgive me for allowing rebellious thoughts. Forgive me for allowing negative thoughts. Forgive me for allowing critical thoughts. In Jesus' name. And right now, as your hands are raised to God, God is cleansing your heart. God is cleansing your mind. God is cleansing your life. 
God is giving you a clean heart and a clean hand. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may put your hands down. Another sin that we need to repent is the sin of impurity. Now, what is that sin of impurity? It's when we allow sexual sins to take over our life. It can be lustful thoughts, fantasizing. It can be masturbation, pornography. It can be an impure relationship that you have with the opposite sex or the same sex. You have compromised your purity. You may even commit premarital sex or adultery. Right now, I want to tell you, lust is lust, lust is sin. God does not condemn you, but God desires that you will change. Because that is not your level. That is not the level that you are meant to be. God, God has placed you at a higher level. You are a man and a woman of God. You are a man and a woman of dignity. Right now, with all eyes closed, just everybody close your eyes. If you are that person, and today you want to admit, there's impurity in my life. I need to change. I repent. I'm tired of hiding this. If you're that person, just raise your hand to God. No one, nobody is condemning you. Nobody is accusing you. God wants to change you. God wants to bring healing in your life. God wants to make you pure. Right now, God is cleansing your hand. God is cleansing your heart. God is cleansing your memories. God is cleansing your emotions. God is cleansing your thoughts. His blood is washing you clean. And God is telling you right now, you are forgiven. You don't have to condemn yourself anymore. God has forgiven you. God is giving you a new start today. It's not too late for you. God loves you so much that He wants to give you a fresh start starting today. Right now, just talk to God. Amen. Just look here for a while. I'd just like to add a few things, no? What was Achan's sin? Ano yung kasalanan ni Achan? No? Well, first of all, let, let's, let's go to the time when it was discovered. Sabi dito ng Lord, in Joshua chapter 7, verse 10, the Lord said to Joshua, stand up. Kasi nga, it was during this time, they have just experienced a great victory. They won no, over a nation, over a city that was so much more powerful than them. Tinalo nila isang bayan no, na, na higit na mas makapangyarihan at mas malakas kesa sa kanila. They were winning. Let me tell you this. People, you are born to win. God has destined you to win. Now, something happens and right after experiencing a tremendous victory, they suffer a tragic defeat. Okay? They took on the smaller town. You know, the town of so much more smaller that in fact, when 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 uh, when they tried to spy out, they tried to survey out the city, tinanong ni Joshua, yung mga, yung mga advisors niya, and they checked it out, say, maliit, that's only a small city. Just only send a few men. Not everyone should go. I mean, look at Jericho. That is so much bigger and we destroyed it. And that's just only smaller. We don't have to go. Just send a few people there. And guess what? They were defeated. And so, here's what happens, no? The Lord said to Joshua, Stand up, what are you doing down? Because Joshua was praying. And this is the Lord, what the Lord said, Israel has sinned. They have violated my co covenant, which I commanded them to keep. They have, now look at Achan's sin. They have taken some devoted things. They have stolen, they have lied, and they have put them with their own possessions. Now look at this. Sabi dito, they have stolen and they have lied. And they have mixed it. Apparently, what Achan did was he saw something that was beautiful. Because God wanted 
the nation to destroy everything. Not even, not even uh, the, what's this? The, the, the gold or the jewelry or the clothes. Everything is to be destroyed. Okay? Everything is to be offered up to God. They are not to touch anything. No, those things, no, that first city, everything in it is consecrated, is to be devoted to God. No one is supposed to touch. Apparently, that's, Jericho was a very rich city. And so when they came in, what happened was, Achan, if, if you look at the verse, no, when he was finally found out, okay, Nung nakausap na siya ni Joshua in verse 20, Achan replied, It's true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. This is what I have done. When I saw in the plunder a beautiful robe from Babylonia, 200 shekels of silver and wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels, I coveted them and took them. They are hidden in the ground inside my tent with the silver underneath. And in what God was saying prior to that, sabi niya, they have mixed it with their own possessions. You know, sometimes that's what we do. We mix sin together with our righteousness, thinking that it's not going to be, it's not, it's not, no, it's not going to be seen. Hello? When you try to cover up, you try to do ministry, you try to go as if everything is still fine, you try to mix it. No? Sinama sabi niya, hinalo ni Ekan yung kinuha niya sa kanyang sariling mga gamit as if kanya. But God saw. And look, look, look at the consequence, no? Going back to that verse, they have taken some of the devoted things, they have stolen, they have lied, they have put them with their own possessions. That is why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. Let me ask you something. For those of you who are experiencing defeat, okay, because you are born to win, it's not normal that you lose. If you are on a losing side in your life, maybe losing out on your network, don't think it's fine. Don't, don't, don't assume that it's just okay. Hello? When you're losing out on your life, losing out maybe even in your finances, don't even think that this is fine. No, it's not. Okay? Sabi ng Lord, that's why the Israelites cannot stand against their enemies. That's why. Okay? Why? Because there's sin. There's something wrong. And this is what the Lord says, I will not be with you anymore unless you deal with it. This is a very hard teaching. No? Uh, most of the time, our Sunday services are like full of encouragement, full of just, full of just uh, exhortation, and people are just, are just... But this is hard to deal with something that is wrong. Sabi dito ng Lord, unless you deal with it, unless you destroy it, whatever among you, Whatever it is that you're hiding, I, will, I cannot be with you. The Lord wants to be with you. Gusto kang tulungan ng Diyos. Gusto, ka maka, gusto ng Diyos na, 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 what's this? Na, na, na manalo ka, magtagumpay ka sa buhay. Pero bakit ka talunan? Eh? Because you have touched something that belongs to God. Eh? Here's another thing. If, if you're gonna if you're gonna go to the story in after eventually Achan was found out, he suffered a consequence. His whole family had to die, including him. But afterwards, no, when they were consecrated already and they started to attack the nation of AI, and eventually they were victorious. Look at this. This is just amazing. Okay. In verse in verse twenty seven of chapter eight, the following chapter. After they have destroyed, they have conquered AI. Nanalo na sila. Because dinil na nila si Achan eh. But Israel did carry off themselves, for themselves, the livestock and the plunder of this city as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Like, <laughs> now think about this for a while. God wanted all this time to bless. 
the nation of Israel, even Achan. Eh? Gustong pagpalain ng Diyos si Achan eh. But you know what Achan did? He went before God. He got something. That, understand this. God wanted him to prosper. God probably wanted him to have, to have some silver, some gold, some fine linen. But the thing is, he got it. No? On his own, rather than allowing God to give it to him. What am I trying to say here? And as a result, he was destroyed. Sex is a gift from God. Marriage is a gift from God. But unfortunately for so many people, they try to take it even before God gives it to them. Hello? Are you getting this? They try to take it. If only Achan knew that when they finally conquered Ai, God was really going to give him so much. He took something that God really was intending to give him. Hello. Don't take what God, don't take in advance what God originally planned for you. Amen. Amen. Don't take your tights. Why? Because that is something that is devoted to God. When you took it, when you take it for yourself, because sometimes it thinks, parang sayang eh. That's what Achan felt. Like, wow, this robe is nice. Sayang naman if I'm just gonna burn it. Wow, that, that cute girl, that cute guy is, you know, I, I might miss out on him or on her. Or what if nobody comes next and you took advantage when all along God has a plan for you? Just imagine, just, just the following day, if Achan could have just simply waited, he could have received God's blessing. Amen? Don't touch the devoted things. Don't touch what is not yet yours. Amen? Because God knows what's best for you. Amen? But also ask yourself, why am I not, why am I not winning? Why am I losing out on people? Why am I losing out on my job? Maybe there is sin in the camp. Maybe there is sin in your life. Ito pa. Sabi ni Jill nang dadamay, honestly, maybe you're in a relationship that's really jeopardizing not just you, but the people you are in relationship with. Hello? Sana kung nagkukumit ka ng immorality, ikaw lang tatamaan eh. Hindi naman eh. Sana kung yung tatay na nagkumit ng adultery, siya lang apektado. Hindi eh. Tatamaan yung anak niya. Tatamaan yung asawa niya. Kaya kailangan mag-repent. Don't try to keep something that you should not keep. Cut it off. If you're je- you know you're jeopardizing somebody's future, somebody's life, not just you, cut it off. Amen. Amen. Understand this. You're not only, when you sin, you're not the only one affected. Others will be affected. Pag bumagsak ka sa exam dahil nagluko ka sa isang babae, sa isang lalaki, hindi ka nakatapos ng pag-aaral, sasaktan mo puso ng magulang mo eh. Sasaktan mo ibang tao. 
You want to win? You're born to win. But let's cut off the Achans in our lives. I want us to pray right now. Come on, just, just, just allow the Lord to break your heart some more. Lord, as we expose ourselves, as we make decisions, Lord, to change, to cut off anything, oh God, in our hearts, any Achans in our lives, Lord. As we change, as we repent, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, let your healing flow. Let your, let, let, Lord God, let there be no condemnation, Lord God. But let there be deep conviction right now in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing. Let there be forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And Lord, cause us to win again. Cause us to win again in the name of Jesus. And as the Lord, and I believe the Lord renewed His promise to Joshua, His covenant to Joshua. And what is that promise to Joshua? The Lord told, told Joshua these words. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. And I want to declare that over your life. If you made a decision to consecrate yourselves before God today, cut off Achan. And I promise you, this is God's word to you. This is God wor God's word to you. Nothing, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. You will be prosperous in the name of Jesus. You will win in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for listening to Destiny Podcasts. For more updates on Destiny Church Manila, visit www.g12destiny.com. You could also like her official page at facebook.com slash Destiny Church Manila. So, feel free to share and comment on this week's message. Have a great day!